Hey there, this is Andy Neal with a motion time saver tutorial, and this time we're headed for a galaxy far, far... Well, you get the idea. If you're not a Star Wars fanboy, or girl, unless you've made a Star Wars fan film. And it's not a Star Wars fan film unless it's got the Star Wars opening title scroll. It's surprising how often I've seen really good lightsaber effects in the same films with really poorly done title scrolls. So, this tutorial will be about an emphasis on accuracy to the film, and with that, I'd like to add my disclaimer that Star Wars is a registered trademark of Lucasfilm Limited. First thing I'd like to do is build some stars. Motion has a great little emitter for building stars, although I admit it doesn't look like that at first. Go into the library and find particle emitters. Click on the sci-fi folder and scroll down to the bottom. There you'll find the star field emitter. Drag it into the layer pane. Hit play and you'll see what I mean about it not looking like a good star field at first. It actually looks like a special effect from a 60s sci-fi show. Okay, well let's fix this. Twirl open the triangle next to the star field emitter to reveal the emitter particles. And if you're not that familiar with particle emitters, it helps to think of the emitter as a gun and the particles as the bullets shot by the gun. An emitter can shoot several different types of particles. They don't have to be the same thing. Case in point is the star field emitter. There are a total of three different particles being shot from this one emitter. Click the checkbox next to each particle layer to turn them off so that you can see which particles they're responsible for. The top particle looks like the big fat stars, the second particle is the small stars, and the third looks to be that nebulous nebula thing. Well, keep that one off. We're not going to use it. Place the playhead in the center of the timeline so that we can see how best the stars are going to look when we make our changes. First, the stars look like they're in a tunnel. This is due to the emitter shape. Go to the emitter tab, and under the shape drop-down, choose Wave. With the emitter selected, right-click in the viewer and choose Emitter from the menu. This allows you to edit the emitter points. Drag this point over to this corner and the other point over here. There. See, now there isn't a hole in the center of our star field. Now, go to the first particle and twirl open the Opacity over Life parameter. This controls the transparency of these stars over their life, which has the effect of controlling how bright they look when placed on a black background. The newest particles are completely transparent and don't show up at all. Then they quickly become much brighter and stay that way throughout their life. Well, I want them to dim a bit at the edge of the frame and stay bright in the middle. Click on the last opacity box and drop it down to about 30 or so. Now, go to the other particle cell and twirl open the opacity layer. This one has a much more aggressive dimming going on. Let's minimize the black section. Click on the second box, driving up its opacity a bit. Then click on the third box and make it 100, or completely opaque, so that it'll be the brightest at the edges of the frame. Hopefully, when we've finished all this, this will help create a random sort of look to the brightness of the star field. Now there's one more thing I want to change. Go down to the scale randomness and turn it up to about 10. Now go back to the first particle and turn the scale down to about 15 and the scale randomness to about 30. Now I'm ready to crank up the number of stars. Instead of adjusting the numbers in the particles themselves, I can make global adjustment in the emitter and it'll affect both sets of particles. So in the emitter, go down to the birth rate and crank it up to about 500%. Now here's where my card really starts to have to work. Now you may have a better video card than I do, so it might not labor you as much, but mine isn't liking me at all right now. But that's okay because we're not going to be using this emitter much longer. Okay, so this is a lot of stars, but they still don't make it out to the edges of the frame. For that, we need to increase the life and the speed. Click in the box and type 200% for the life, and then about 120% for the speed. Now this looks pretty good. If you don't like the arrangement of your stars, you can simply go into the particles and click on the random seed generator and you'll get a whole other arrangement of stars. You just click until you're happy. Now this is good for me. Now go to File, Export, or click Command E on the keyboard. Choose Current Frame under the Export drop-down and click Options. Now the default is a TIFF, but it's a compressed TIFF, so click on the Advanced button and change the compression to None. Hit OK. Now go to the output and uncheck the Use Current Project button.
change the color to just color instead of color plus alpha. This will give us a basic black and white picture with no transparency. Hit OK. On the After Export drop-down, choose Import into Project. OK. Now go ahead and turn off the particle layer. We don't need it anymore. Now we can get on with the business of making the crawl. Create a new group and call it Logo. The first thing that appears on screen for the crawl is the Star Wars title logo. I've seen fonts that kind of approximate it, but nothing's exact. You can find the logo on the internet, but the problem aside from trademark infringement is that an image of the logo will be rasterized, so that means it'll look soft when it's scaled up. This is where vector art can really come in handy. Now the easiest way to make vector art is with a program like Illustrator. I built this logo in Illustrator using a picture off the internet as a guide, altering it obviously. Now, Motion can import Adobe Illustrator files as long as they are saved with PDF compatibility. In Motion, make sure the playhead is at the beginning of the project, then simply find the Illustrator file in the file browser and drag it into the logo group. Note that it's automatically the size of the frame. However, I want to show you something. Click on the Properties tab and scale up the logo. You'll notice that it looks soft, just like any other picture might. Hey, what gives? I thought this was a vector graphic. Isn't it supposed to look sharp, no matter how high you scale it? It turns out that when you import a vector graphic, motion rasterizes your graphic. I guess it's because it makes it a lot easier on your system. To unraster the logo, select it in the Layers tab and hit Shift-F or right-click and choose Reveal Source Media. This points you to the actual media in your project. In the inspector, click on the media tab that wasn't there before and uncheck the box for fixed resolution. There. Now your graphic is nice and sharp now. The logo is supposed to fly through space and disappear into the distance. Then the crawl appears and essentially does the same thing. However, they both move at different speeds, which is why we're going to keep the main body text in a separate group from the logo. It also means that I'm going to use two different ways to animate the scene. For the logo, I'm going to animate just the logo, but for the main body of the text, I'm going to use a camera. Turn off the logo for a bit. First, I want to write out the text portion before I do anything else. The actual text will be different for everybody, but it'll look very Star Wars-y nonetheless in the right font and color. I'm just going to type my first paragraph and not worry about how it looks yet. I looked up the format of the text on Wikipedia. I swear you can find anything there. According to them, the font type is News Gothic Bold. This is helpful because it's a very common font probably already on your computer. Once you've selected the right font, click in the Style tab to change the color. I sampled the color from my Star Wars DVD and came up with .91 for red, .75 for green, and .35 for blue. Click on the Layout button and change the justification to Full. Now that kind of screws things up a bit. The last couple words in my text are stretched across the entire last row. If I try to straighten it up with tracking, then it screws up the rest of the paragraph. To fix this, select the last line and cut it out with Command X on the keyboard. Duplicate the text layer, and then in the Format tab, select all the duplicate text and paste the cut text into its place with Command V. Then, just line up that last line so that it looks part of the first paragraph. For the second and third paragraphs, just simply duplicate the first paragraph by hitting Command D on the keyboard. Then, continue typing. For the sake of time, I'm just going to quickly do that. Make sure to line the second paragraph below the first, and then the third paragraph below the second. If you can't see where to place the third paragraph, then just select the main body layer and drag it up so that you can properly place the third paragraph. When you're done, make sure that all of the paragraphs are at the zero position on the x-axis. Once you're finished, it should look something like this. You want to make sure that each paragraph is the same width. So if you have some that are a bit longer than others, just click the text tab and go to the tracking parameter. Hold down the option key and click and drag in the box to adjust it to the other paragraphs. Holding Option down and dragging this way allows you to make very small changes as opposed to the extremely large changes that occur with the tracking if you use the slider or these little triangles. Now that everything is lined up, we can start the animation. Begin by creating a new camera and switching the project to 3D. 
Don't forget to change the background back to 2D by clicking this little icon in the layer. That will ensure that the stars will stay where they are no matter where the camera is moving. Also, click the camera tab in the inspector and change the angle of view to 90 degrees. This is a much wider camera angle than the default angle and provides a skew to the text when arranged properly. I arrange the camera by eye using the original crawl as my guide. The key is that the text is readable and that one line completely fills the bottom of the frame as it appears. Adjust the camera's position and X rotation to get it correct. Once you think you have it, hold the shift key down and click and drag the Y position to sort of fake the animation so that you can see how it's going to move. The text should end up right along the upper third of the frame when it's in the far distance. If it's not there, keep adjusting the camera's Z position and X rotation until you have it right. For my 720p sequence, the camera numbers are 258 on the X position, 32 on the Z position, with an X rotation of 73.6. Your numbers might be slightly different based on the size of your blocks of text and the size of your project. The camera angle should be pretty steep though. Most crawls I've seen use too shallow of an angle and it doesn't really look right. Once you have it correct, move the camera's Y position until the text disappears behind the frame. Turn the logo back on. Of course, it's on its side now because the layer was made 3D when we created our camera. However, it's not necessary for the logo to be 3D at all. Just click its status icon to change it back to a 2D layer, and voila, it's just as we left it. To animate this layer, we can simply keyframe its Z position parameter. However, we can do things even easier by using a behavior. In the original crawl, the logo flies into space and finally disappears around 10 seconds the crawl itself goes on for about a minute and 15 seconds. Right now my sequence is only 300 frames or 10 seconds long. We're going to have to lengthen it. Click on this box and type 1800. Now your sequence is long enough but your layers end at the 300 frame mark. That's okay for the logo since it's supposed to disappear after 10 seconds but the text we want to last longer. Hit end to send the playhead to the end of your project. Then select the camera, text, and background layers and hit O on your keyboard to set a new out point for these layers. Now select the logo layer and hit Shift O to move the playhead to the logo's out point. Go to the behaviors and choose basic motion throw. Hit F7 on your keyboard to bring up the dashboard if it's not already up for you. Click the 3D button and then click and move the arrow until it's facing backwards. Now hold down the shift key while you do it to get it to snap to 45 degree increments. Go to the behaviors tab in the inspector and increase the throw velocity until it's about, whoa, wait a second, it just disappeared. Don't worry, it's still there, but it can't be seen because the default motion camera can't see anything that's more than 10,000 units away. To fix this, it's easy. Just select the camera and in the camera tab, change the far plane to 14,000. Now the logo will be visible until the throw velocity is around negative 1400. Thankfully we don't need it to be much smaller. I made the velocity about negative 1250. When you play it, it's a nice smooth fly. No keyframes are necessary. The best part is that adjusting the speed to your taste is as simple as increasing or decreasing the throw velocity. At the end of the fly, we can't just have the logo pop off the screen, so we're going to add a blur and a fade. Go to about frame 270 and add a filter, blur, Gaussian blur. Hit I on your keyboard to adjust the filter's endpoint to where the playhead is. This way, the blur only happens at the end. Go to the filters tab and in the amount parameter, right click and choose ramp from the menu. Hit I again on the keyboard to limit the ramp behavior to the length of the blur. Change the end value to 400. The ramp behavior is a great little behavior to use in place of keyframes when all you want is a quick two-point movement. Since it's attached to the amount parameter of the blur filter, it uses the existing blur amount, in this case 4, and then adds 400 to it by the end of the behavior. I could have keyframed this, but this way is just as easy and it's easier to make changes later. Now, add the fade behavior. In the dashboard, drag the fade in to zero 
and make the fade out about 60. After about 7 seconds, frame 210, the crawl begins to appear. We're going to animate the crawl by animating the 3D camera. Since the logo is a 2D layer, it won't be affected by the camera's movement. Now this time, I'm actually going to use keyframes. I could do this with the move behavior, but it's just as easy to use keyframes. Place the playhead on frame 210. Click the record button or hit A on the keyboard. With the camera selected, option click the Y position parameter to set a keyframe. Move the playhead to the end of the sequence and shift drag the Y position until the text is about uh, that small. Turn off the record button. If you play it, however, the text doesn't show up right away. This is because motion assumes you want Bezier keyframes. We don't. Hit Command-8 on the keyboard to show the keyframe editor. Notice the nice curvy line. Select the animation menu beside the transform position Y and choose interpolation linear. Now the animation moves all at the same speed. Our final part to this is making the text disappear at the end. In the original crawl, the first paragraph begins to disappear as if the lines are being eaten away as it gets further and further. Thankfully, there's a fairly easy way to do this. Remember when we adjusted the far plane of the camera so that we could see the logo as it got further away? Well now we need to adjust it again. Go to frame 300. This is the last frame of the logo. With the camera selected, go to the camera tab in the inspector and option click the far plane parameter. Also, option click the far fade. Move one frame forward and option click them both again. Then adjust the far plane to 850 and the far fade to 500. Go to the end of your project. There's a nice little fade going on now, but the text isn't completely gone. So make sure you're at the end of your sequence and select the camera and adjust the Y position a little bit more until the text completely disappears. Make sure that you're on the keyframe that you had set earlier. You can tell because of the diamond icon in the animation menu. Well, there you have it, a beautiful Star Wars crawl for your Star Wars fan film. I'm Andy Neal, and this has been a Motion Time Saver Tutorial.